at the starting of the classes we have seen the concept of er diagrams right so the reason why we are trying to learn to draw the er diagrams is because of to make our client understood how your physical database is going to be look after many years or after some months right so basically the client is going to give certain kind of requirements those requirements you are going to analyze after analyzation you are going to draw the er diagrams so the reason why you are drawing the er diagrams is basically with this with this analyzation you can able to implement some completely physical database but to make to show the client how your physical database is going to look in the future that is the reason we are going to draw the er diagrams right yes. once we draw on the er diagrams we can able to define various kind of uh, relational diagrams right so you know how to convert the er diagrams into relational diagrams we have seen some seven step procedure right once we draw on relational diagrams we can able to directly work on physical database am i right so if you would like to work on physical database it means i can able to create the tables whatever the tables that i am going to get in relational model all those tables i am going to be physically implemented in the database database right for this we require sql sql right and then to process these data to process the data which is printed in the sql you require some kind of analogy that is relational algebra as well as relational calculus you can able to know any one of the language then you can able to process the data which is printed in the database that's the reason you try to learn relational algebra or relational calculus so it's a kind of purely mathematical concepts then we have we have started the concept of sql and we are able to implement the sql database as well as some of the operations of the sql some of the operations that can be like retrieving the data or it can be like modification of the data or it can be like creating of schemas all those things we can able to with the help of sql right means simply i can say that if i am trying to say the schema of the database if i say like student id student id student name student department can i call this as a schema yes similarly if i am going to say that department name or i can call it as s department because i have written it as s department here also i am taking it as s department and department hod and department phone number can i call this also one schema schema 1 and schema 2 so this is the two tables how you draw based on the given requirement which is given by the client means actually client will give the requirements client will give the requirements those requirements you identified and first what you did before drawing the er diagrams what you did have you identified the entities yes sir no you have identified the entities then you identified the relationships among the entities then you identified various kind of extra properties of those entities extra properties means i can say that as attributes then we try to draw er diagram then we try to draw er diagram means once we draw er diagram can you able to construct the tables yes once you construct the tables then we'll go for the physical database implementation physical database implementation where i can say that sql uses it. so means if you would like to construct any kind of a database any kind of database we can able to follow one kind of approach what we followed so far this kind of approach i will call it as top down approach top down approach meaning that if you would like to construct if you would like to construct any kind of relational database we can able to follow various kind of approaches amma among those one kind of approach is top down approach another kind of approach is just stop it this one that is bottom up approach another one is mixed approach 
Another one is mixed approach. Okay. In top down approach, we are going to first identify various kind of large elements. Like entity is a kind of large element or not? Yes. Large element. Then we can able to define the relationship between those two. Then we are going to identify extra characteristics. Then we are going to draw the tables for it. Then we will implement the physical database. This is one kind of approach. Whereas coming to bottom up approach, we are going to first meet the client as usual and we will try to identify various kind of small small elements. Small small elements means I can call it as attributes. Then I will define the common attributes which will come under one set of location. We can define them as relationships. Then we can go for the entities. And we can go for the entities. And then we will go for constructing the tables. This kind of procedure I will call it as bottom up approach. Means in bottom up approach we are going to start from the least smallest element and we will try to get it the largest element. Like at the end we are going to get what? Schema I can call it as physical database only. Means in both the approaches the outcome is same but the way that we are processing the data is different. It's different. Means if you are able to say the example for top down approach is specialization. Have you observed anywhere the terminology of specialization? Right? Extended ER diagrams we have seen, right? Specialization means we are going to, we are going to identify some special characteristics of the tuples. We are going to make split them into multiple entities. Multiple entities, right? So that is what I can call the specialization. So means large entity I am going to divide into sub sub entities. I will call it a specialization. The same approach we are going to follow here only. Coming to the bottom of our approach, we can call it as generalization, where we are going to take the some small tables. If you are going to identify some common characteristics, those common characteristics I am going to combine into single entity. I can call it as generalization, right? And coming to mixed approach. Based on the need, based on the time, based on the capacity of the company, we are going to follow either top down approach or bottom approach. Meaning that up to certain point of time we will follow top down, up to certain point of time we are going to follow bottom up approach. I can call it as mixed approach. Right? If you are going to follow any kind of approach, the final outcome is going to be a physical database. Physical database, right? Yes. But certain times uh, you may get the data like this. Like for example, if I am going to take the table student id student name student department and student hod or i can say that department hod department hod and i can say that department phone number assume that with the help of this procedure whether i am going to follow top down approach or whether i am going to follow bottom up approach you got your schema will like this right? is it possible or not sometimes it may be possible so, if you are going to get this kind of database, if you are going to get this kind of table, this kind of table, is it the correct table? Is it the correct table? How can you say that is it a, is it a efficient table or not? Based upon the way that you arrange the attributes, right? For example, if you take the student number ID 1, name is J, department is CSC, HOD is A, phone number is 4321, right? Student ID is 2, name is K, department is mechanical, HOD is yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4. For example, let me take one more student ID 3, whose name is L, department is CSC, when department is CSC, what about the HOD? A, and phone number is 4321, 4321 means after certain kind of procedures what I follow, I got my final schema will like this. My final schema will like this, right? Because it is a completely theoretical processor, I cannot able to guarantee, I cannot able to guarantee it may be an efficient schema. It may be an efficient schema, right? You may observe this example. If you are going to get this kind of schema, it is not efficient one. Why it is not efficient one? Because it contains a duplicate data. If you are able to observe A4321, A4321 for the same department. Based on our logical thinking only, I can able to define. So by means, when you are going to get this kind of schema, we can simply, based on our logical thinking, 
we can able to split into two tables can i split into two tables to avoid redundant data yes so what i can do i can make it as s yes id yes name yes department very good and what about the other table yes department and department hod and department phone number right if i are going to write the data you are going to write the data like so 1 2 and 3 j k l csc mechanical and csc right so here you are going to write this data a uh, sorry it should be csc a and 4321 mechanical yes 1234 now have you reduced any kind of redundant data here yes or no we have reduced one extra tuple one extra tuple that is csc a 4321 so as it is a small relation i can able to observe only few redundant data but if it is a large database you are going to get vast redundant data so you have to overcome that right so how can you do that with help of yes yeah, it is a small table with help of logical thinking we do, we got split into multiple table so that we reduce the redundant data but if it is a large database how can you make split into multiple tables that's the question right means certain times you are not able to identify which are redundant which are not redundant which are not redundant at that time what we can do now we can go for some kind of concepts called functional dependency concept that we'll see in the next class so functional dependency is a concept which is meant for to define which is meant for to identify various kind of uh, dependent columns various kind of uh, dependent column for example if you are able to observe clearly hod is depend on uh, department or department is depend on hod hod is depend on department meaning that if i am going to give the department name the department name can i able to, can i am able to get hod name yes so hod name is depend on department department so i can say that it's a kind of functional dependency student department is functionally derives department hod this is the some kind of mathematical notation that we will see in the further class right so i can say that here is hod is depend on department or student s department is going to derive hod similarly can i write one more functional dependency student department can able to derive the department phone number yes but department phone number cannot able to derive student department department right so this is what i am called as functional dependency right? based on this concepts we can able to implement an efficient relation how can you make implement an efficient relation by making some set of uh, procedures right among those one is uh, functional dependencies another one is through the concept of normalization through the concept of normalization so normalization means basically which is meant for to normalize the data normalize the data normalize the data means which is going to reduce the redundancy which is going to reduce the redundancy by reducing the redundancy what will happen the size of the database is going to be reduced am i right so if you are going to have vast redundancy it is going to acquire more size if you want to reduce the size you have to remove all the redundancy that we can able to get it through normalization normalization right so here simply the redundancy is reduced because of splitting the table into multiple tables if you are going to split a single table into multiple tables we can basically reduce the redundancy concepts right so the thing is here if you are able to observe this example if i am going to reduce this table single table into multiple tables multiple tables do i reduce the redundancy or not yes. so this is what i can call it as normalization normalization right so while reducing the single table into multiple tables what might be the procedure you have to follow which attributes are depend on which one to identify that we are going to go for uh, functional dependencies right so these two concepts we will try to learn in further classes okay now 
if i would like to say if i would like to say a relational database a relational database is a good relational database is a good relational database what might be the features of it can anybody tell based on our, our basic knowledge of sql can you able to tell the answers for this what is the first one it should have no redundancy very good first and foremost important one is it should not have the redundant data it should not have redundant data that is the first thing right because of redundancy you are going to get vast size also vast size is there and also it it's it, uh, it it reduces the performance also that's the reason one of the best feature is it should have to avoid redundant data and is there another things are there hmm? according to our discussion is there any other things are there i can say one as you have to avoid anomalies you have to avoid anomalies what does the meaning of anomaly we can call simply a kind of a mistake we can call simply a kind of a problem we have to make so right guys first tell me is it a good relation or is it a bad relation bad relation right why i am saying that it is bad relation because it is having one point is redundant data one point is redundant data another point is it is having various kind of anomalies anomalies means basically when we are going to perform certain kind of operations on this data it is going to produce certain kind of mistakes those mistakes basically i can call it as anomaly so i can call it as you have to avoid the mistakes while modifying you have to avoid the mistakes while modifying i can call it as avoiding the anomalies right what is the basic meaning of anomaly it is going to produce a mistake right when it is going to produce a mistake in the bad schema suppose for example for example let me try to update this data this particular data csc with the csc with the csc a equals instead of the department name as csc i update it with the csc a right what might be the problem like hvd is same only but department name is available at what locations in all other locations we have to compulsory update in other all other locations or not if i am not going to update in all other locations what can i say it's a mistake or not yes meaning that one kind of anomaly is i can call it as update anomaly meaning that when you are going to perform update operations there are some situations where the updated data might not be updated in the actual updated locations we can call it as update anomaly so this is one kind of uh, anomaly similarly can i say an kind of anomaly called delete anomaly what is the meaning of delete anomaly if i am going to delete something it is going to be a mistake what might be the mistake is there any chance see for example if you are able to observe the point here i have i am trying to delete the student number 3 from the department csc department csc if i am going to delete what might be happen all the respective record is going to be deleted right similarly i am trying to delete the student number 1 from the respective department csc deleted if i deleted all the students from the csc department what happened here indirectly indirectly the csc department also deleted from the our university that is a problem or not yes so that 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 kind of problem i can call it as deletion anomaly meaning that if you are going to delete all the students who are belongs to csc the department itself is going to be deleted that should not be correct right there are certain departments where it may have no students also so but actually here what happening the already existed department also deleted that's what we can call it as deleted anomaly or delete anomaly and certain kind of anomalies are there we can call it as insertion anomalies insertion anomaly right meaning that if i am going to implement a new department 
a new department ca called uh, deep learning called deep learning with the hod sum b with the phone number sum 542 5420 other than that it is a four digit phone number right but as it is a new department that is a new department in our university if i would like to implement it in our university is there any students are there initially no at the time what i have to do i have to place student id as md student name as md right but is this schema is going to allow no because student id is a primary key you have to must and should have to enter student id must and should have to enter student id but where is the chance to enter the new department it is not possible you have to enter the new department when the new student joins but it is not correct right so that's a kind of anomaly like in quality as insertion anomaly insertion anomaly so that's the reason i can say that for bad relation schema the problems are like redundancy and anomalies right so can we overcome this with the help of a good relation schema yes right for example if i am trying to update with the csc with the csca what might be happen here simply here i am going to update with the csc a what about all this data is it updated or not how it will be updated because of there is a foreign key relationship between these two when you are defining foreign key relationship on update cascade we can able to use so that you can able to update so this is what is called as good relation schema so here it is going to be automatically updated no need to inter interfere by the developer this is what is called as csc a so update element similarly if i am going to delete any particular student any particular student like all the students deletion is there any problem for the existing department there is no problem similarly if i would like to introduce the new department like deep learning with b and phone number is 5420 is there any problem for the uh, any data no. so these are the anomalies that you have to overcome when you are saying that a kind of a database has good relational database okay so you have to avoid all kind of anomalies all kind of anomalies and one more thing is that that is it should be lossless decomposition it should be lossless decomposition meaning that meaning that what is the meaning of decomposition can i say here i have decomposed this table into i have decomposed this main table into two tables decomposing meaning that splitting the table into single table i can call it as decomposition right so here lossless decomposition means after decomposing a single table into multiple tables multiple tables i got the two relations as a and b two relations as a and b and if i am going to combine these two relations into again one relation i have to get actual data i have to get actual data then i can call it as lossless decomposition right so i can say that uh, it should have lossless decomposition and there should not be no lossy decomposition there will be clear difference between these two there will be no lossy lossy means what we are going to loss certain data when you are going to combine them into one table is there any situation yes there are certain situations you are going to get loss of data when you are going to combine two or more tables similarly when you are going to combine two tables into one table instead of getting the actual data instead of getting the actual data like a plus b you are going to get some extra data also is there any situation yes or no this extra data i can call it as spurious tuples spurious tuples spurious tuples means simply i can call it as unwanted tuples unwanted tuples. like can you give an example where you might get this situation for example try to take student id student name student name is one kind of schema is one kind of schema similarly take out the another one student name student department or let me take student marks student marks now if you are going to see the data what is available here 
student ID 1 whose name is J, student number 2 whose name is also J. Is it possible? Right? There are certain students whose name is same. Right? So, here name is J, marks are 55, name is J, marks are 56. Actual letter here is 1J, 55, 2J, 56. Right? So, because of to make some kind of normalization, actually, I have split this table into two tables, assume. Right? Now, if I am going to combine these two tables into a single table, what might be the problem? Right? You are going to get extra data, right? 1J, J, 55. Am I right? Similarly, this is going to be matched. 1J, J, 56. 2J, J, 55. 2J, J, 56. So, here I can call this data as contains extra tuples or I can call it as poorest tuples also. Right? So, actual data will be this one and this one and the remaining two are spurious tuples, right. This is what I can call it as lossless decomposition. And certain times what will happen now, when you are going to combine, certain times your data may be lost, your data may be lost, that is what I can call it as uh, lossy decomposition, right. You have to make sure that if you are saying that it is a kind of a good relational database, compulsory there should not be low, no lossy decomposition, right. This is all the features will be classified as an efficient database. An efficient database. And one more feature is there, it should be scalable. It should be scalable. Scalability means are we all scalable? Right? We can able to scalable to any level. What are the main ones? One? We can able to learn anything. Right? With the help of simple hardware, we can able to learn anything. So, the meaning of terminology here scalability means basically we have we have defined a database with the 10 features with 10 features in future or in after 20 years if some modifications are required if some extensions are required some extended features are required our database should be in a position to support this that is what you can call it as scalability right how we are going to get this idea Basically, how can how you can think like after 20 years what might be your database? So you have to analyze the requirements completely. Right? When you are going to analyze the requirements perfectly, and you have to identify what is the scope of the database, right? What might be the number of users, what type of data? Like you can say type of users using and number of users access this after 20 years and type of data that I am supposed to store all these things that you have to consider when you are going to make constructing any kind of good relational database right so then only you can able to get a scalable database right and what about your response of the database right if you are going to give certain query to the database right meaning that see the another kind of uh, feature, if I am saying it is a kind of a good relational database, it should be robust. Meaning that if you are going to give one type of query, your database should be in a position to respond it. To respond it. Meaning that you have to design the database in such a way that it, it should have to capability to respond to any kind of query. Right? So if you are going to write certain query, it should have to respond to certain data. If there is no data related to, to that, you have to say that there is no data. Like that. So we can call it as it should be robust. These are some of the features we can say it is a kind of good relational database. And what might be the problems for bad relation schema? It is redundant and it is anomaly. And you may get uh, the problems like lossy decomposition. Lossy decomposition. Meaning that what, my, what you can able to observe with this point when you are going to split a table into multiple tables, you have to make sure that you have to should not like over normalize. Over normalize means the single table I can able to split into some five tables also. The single table I can able to split into two tables also. But which one is the best one? Two tables is the best one, right? So based on the requirement, you have to make sure that right? it should not be over normalized or it should not make like less normalized. So that is what I can call it as. 
bad relation schema we can say that it is lossy decomposition right so based on your uh, knowledge your knowledge when you are going to define any kind of uh, a relational database a relational database can you can you provide some kind of guidelines how to construct the relational database can you provide right guys try to observe there is a problem right for example today i am constructing database i am constructing database as sid one attribute name is sid right in future one of the employee came to the company he hand over your work then what might be he think that sid is what sid may think as a seller sid basically he may think it as a seller sid yes or no he may think it as a student id he may think in different manner if he know some abbreviation of sid right so it should not happen so meaning that when you are trying to construct any kind of relational database you have to make sure to give the meaningful names for meaningful names for all kind of attributes which you are using or for the tables which you are defining so for our tables or for the attributes you should have to give the meaningful names that i can technically call it as semantic sum and this kind of generalized principles i can call it as informal informal guidelines for constructing relational databases right so basically everybody will follow why i am saying it is informal even in place of sid if i place a also this is meaning this is a valid data only it will work perfectly but to make it everybody understood i have to give meaningful name. that's why i am saying it is simply informal guidelines and certain times you may get null values also right your database is going to allow null values actually but you have to avoid these null values right so actually the database is going to allow null values so we should not like oppose that right informally we have to make sure that to avoid null values why we have to avoid null values if you are going to perform certain kind of relational operations or if you are going to perform some kind of sum operations over the null values we are going to get unknown data unknown data that we have seen earlier right so that's the reason i am saying that you have to avoid null values right so meaning that sql is a kind of three value logic which you know right one is true another one is false another one is unknown right when you are going to work with unknown value sorry null values you are going to generate unknown values so to make sure that to avoid unknown values you have to make avoid null values avoid null. right what might be the solution to avoid null values but user may enter certain data right if i am asking the user to enter age he might not be interested to enter the age then what you, what you can do can we place some default value yes we can place some default value as zero some default value zero this is one kind of solution right any other things we can able to follow can we able to avoid anomalies we have to avoid the anomalies anomalies means those can be any kind of insertion anomaly or updation anomaly or deletion anomaly or whatever it may be you have to avoid all those anomalies and you have to avoid spurious tuples you have to avoid spurious tuples how are you going to avoid a spurious tuples what might be the solution to avoid a spurious tuples right basically you are getting the spurious tuples because of combining two or more tables right when you are going to combine the two or more tables basically if you are not going to work with the primary keys concept you are going to get a spurious tuples so the solution for to avoid a spurious tuples is try to make combine the two or more tables with what primary key columns am i right if i am saying it is primary key columns those columns contains inequi data and if i are going to combine it is going to get only correct data it's not it is it is not going to provide any kind of spurious data so like this we are going to have various kind of informal guidelines any other there any other are there 
right so basically with our knowledge can i say that all the attribute names all the attribute names in the tables should be atomic or non atomic should be atomic so all should be atomic attributes meaning atomic means what which cannot divide we have seen earlier only right atomic values and non atomic values all the same composed attributes all the same right so these are the some of the informal guidelines Fine. so these are the some of the informal guidelines okay. so in the in the next class we'll try to cover the functional dependency concept then we'll move for further concepts like normalization all those things so if you have any doubts you can ask me